Hi, this is Abhay. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, we'll see how you can back up your Anatan instance hosted on Docker. And it will be a fully automated and on-demand backup system. So what we'll see in this particular video is we can you can take compressed backups of your Anatan data volume. Then you can upload it directly to Google Drive using a command line interface named as Arcloon. And then automatically clean up the older backups. Those are taken up on your server. And uh, run everything using a lightweight Docker container. So you can host uh, on any system you are using with Docker's. And I trigger the backups on a schedule or manually whenever you want. So let's start with this system. Let me highlight something very important before making this video. I personally searched through YouTube to see anyone had covered this topic in detail. And while some tutorials talk about backing up Anaten, they usually focus on exporting workflows or credentials, which is just a small part of your setup. They don't know how to back up the entire Docker container data, which includes your workflows and credentials, but also includes execution tags, settings, connection, and everything else stored your, in your Anaten instance. What I'm sharing in this video is a complete backup system. And this is the first complete production grade solution for backing up and restoring Anaten Docker setups on YouTube. If this solves your problem you are facing for, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, as well as share this video with others in Anaten self-hosting community. So we'll need to install our clone for this first. And what is Arclone first? So Arclone is nothing but a command line program to manage your server files to cloud storages. So it integrates with more than 70 plus cloud storages products. And uh, you can use Google Drive, OneDrive or any other cloud storage and upload it to, uh, upload it to Google Drive via Arclone. So the first step here is to install Arclone on, in our system. So you'll have to first SSH into your server. And once SSH, you can install Arclone. I have logged into my server via SSH. Make sure you are logged into a root user. And now I am logged in as a root user. First command to enter here is apt install Arcloan. Once the Arcloan is installed, the next step is to configure Arcloan. You can copy this command from here. And now it is asking me to no remotes found, make a new one. That means no connection to external cloud storage is found, make a new one. So I'll, I just type N here. Now it is asking me to enter the name of the cloud storage. So it's not particularly in the name of the cloud storage, what you are naming it in your system. So it doesn't matter what the name is. So I'll just type J drive here. Now it is asking me to select a particular cloud storage from its list. So I'll just search Google Drive here and it's on 13th number and named as drive. So you can either type 13 or drive in your command line. Now it is asking me to create a Google application client ID and client secret. So what is it? It's nothing but a token just like API token. So you'll have to go to Google Cloud Console, set up accounts, do some uh, OAuth consent screen settings, and then you will get client ID and client secret from there. So if you leave this blank, if you hit enter, so you can still uh, work out for you. But if you want to set up your own client ID and client secret, you can visit this particular URL, rclone.org slash drive and making your own client ID. I'll have this link available in the description and you can follow that and make a, a client ID and client secret. In addition to that, I have made also one video on how to set up OR2 with Anaten. You can find the video in description. The process is similar to that only. So you can follow this particular link as well as my video to get your client ID and client secret. But if you don't want to use it, you can leave it blank and which has a low performance and it might not work sometimes. So I'll recommend you to create your client ID and client secret instead of going with blank. And you can follow uh, these links in the description. I got the client ID by following the method and I'll hit enter. Now it is asking me for a client secret. Enter the client secret too. I'll hit enter. And then it is asking me for a scope. Scope means what permissions you'll have to allow from your Google Drive to our clone. So I'll select the first to full access to all files. Now, here is the thing. You'll have to enter the root folder ID. So the root folder ID is you'll have to go to your browser and you'll have to log in with your Google account and logged into Google Drive. So once logged into Google Drive, you can create a folder here and attend Docker Backup. I have created this for just reference. You can name it anything. And you will have to enter the name of the folder. So you can see that on URL, you will have a URL like this and you will have a, a link after folders. There is slash and there is one random ID. So that is called as folder ID. You can open your terminal and enter that folder ID here. If you have to upload the backup to root, that means to the root directory of Google Drive, you can just enter it. But I'll recommend creating a folder and inside folder, you can enter the folder ID here. I'll just test it here. It's asking me for a, a string value for a service account file. You don't have to do anything here. You just have to end, hit enter. Once entered, it is asking me for an advanced config, but I don't want to do advanced config and by default it's no. So I'll just choose no. Now it is asking me for remote config. 
So this is an important step you will have to follow that it is asking you to use your auto config. So if it is yes, uh, so you'll have to set yes only if you are doing on a Linux instance or a Linux computer which has an access to browser. But here in our case, we are doing it on a web server where it has not access to a dedicated browser. So that is a remote and headless machine. So you just have to type n. It has given me a link. You just have to copy this link and open it in your web browser. As I logged into my web browser, it prompted me to select my account. I have selected my account and it's just asking me to wants to connect to your account. So the name and in here is what I have configured in Google Cloud Console. So uh, whatever name you configure there, the name will be appeared here. I just hit continue. And now it has given me an authorization code. You'll have to just simply copy this particular authorization code from here. Open your terminal and paste the authorization code here. Because this is there, it is asking me to configure this as a team drive. So if you're using the normal Gmail account, you don't have to worry anything. You just have to type enter. It's entered. So it is asking me to, yes, this is okay, default, or you will have to edit this remote. Just have to type Y or hit enter. The connection has been made and you can see that G drive and drive. So the next step is to just quit. You have to type on Q. The configuration has been successfully completed. And now you'll be back to the root user of your VPS. The next step is to create a backup directory in which we'll be saving our backups. So just have to copy these commands from here. Open up your terminal. This command is sudo make directory and this is a particular directory name slash opt slash anatin backups and we'll have to assign the 755 permissions to this particular folder. So you can choose any folder on your web server but if you want to follow the steps as I mentioned you can follow it uh, continuously. I'll hit enter. It has created a directory and it has uh, given the permissions to 755. Now the next step is to create a file named as backup.sh so it's a shell file you'll, you'll have to create this file and then add some codes within this file with the file command from here i'll go to terminal i'll hit enter then hit enter it has opened the nano editor and you'll here you'll have to paste the script that we'll be using for backup so this is the script you'll have to copy from here and paste it in the backup.sh file that i've created i have created the script from entirely from scratch used it on multiple servers and tested it and then i am sharing it with you so what this particular script does that it creates a backup it compresses the whole n attend data available within your docker container then it uploads to the google drive using our clone and then it retains only two backups on your server so your server doesn't get multiple backup files to one by one and then uh, it just adds all data in a log file so this is whole so this is whole configuration of the script only here you'll have to add is you'll have to replace this particular thing with your Google Drive folder ID. So you can enter any Google Drive folder ID. For, a, for my reference, I'll be entering uh, this folder ID from here. And I have pasted the folder ID. Next thing you'll have to change in this particular file is the name of the remote source in our clone that you're given. Then that while creating the Google Drive integration, there was a step where you'll have to mention the name of this integration. So that was not related to the actual name of the Google Cloud or any cloud storage, but it's a name that is given by you. So you'll have to enter the name here and that's it. Once this is done, you don't have to change anything in this particular file. You can copy it from here and paste it in your terminal in the particular nano backup.sh file. I pasted it here. I'll hit control X, Y and enter. And my file has been added here. The next step here is to make this file executable. You can copy this command from here. You can visit your terminal and make it executed. Now this file is executable. Then fourth type is creating a Docker container. So if you had installed Anaton using Portainer or any web-based UI by which you create a Docker container, so you can uh, follow along with me. But if you have not installed Portainer or any GUI for Docker, you can just simply copy this particular command from here in Docker CLI and use that. But I recommend it you doing it via Portainer. I logged into my Portainer dashboard. I'll go to containers. I'm inside container. I'll have to click add container. I'll name this container as Anaton Backups. The name is here. You will find the image name is Alpine Latest. I'll just copy it from here. I'll go to Portainer. I'll paste it. The second thing is volume mapping. Here you'll have to map the Anaton data volume with this particular container's data path. So you'll have to go to 
volumes and here find out what is the name of your n10 data volume so it will be particularly n10 underscore n10 underscore data but you have to copy the name of the volume that you have created i am here again in the create container screen i have to scroll below and click on volumes click on volumes i'll have to click on map additional volume once this is there here you'll have to click on volume you are in the volume you'll have to go to the google drive file and you'll have to file in the container path so it's slash data type slash data here and here you'll have to select the volume so i'll just select the n and data volume so you'll have to select whatever the data volume that your n and instance has you'll have to click on map additional data volume here you'll have to select as bind then come here you'll have to find the container path here you'll have to select slash backups i'll type slash backups here we'll have to map the host path as well as volume so that is the directory where we'll be storing the backups i've selected bind and i pasted the path where i'll be storing the backups we'll have to click on map additional volume again we'll have to go to google drive here you'll have to add the root config r clone here i have to click on bind enter the root config r clone file and same here only and once this is created let's go back to the document and we are done and one last command that i'll have to add i'll copy the command from here i'll go to portal I'll, I'll go to commands and logging here i'll have to change from default to override and i'll have, have to enter this particular command here but this is done i just click on deploy the container once the container is successfully deployed you will have to go to container here you can see that the status is running and we have named it as n10 backups now you can go to logs and you can see the logs here script started uh, backup completed then it uploaded the backup you can see that the n10 backup this is star.gz so it is a compressed backup and it is transferred to my google drive and it has transferred with one out of one files what is the time it has created then it said the upload has been completed clean up started so it has only retained two backups on my uh, server so you can see that only one backup is here because this is the first time i have created the backup and it says all task has been completed so what this script does it creates a backup and it uploads to google drive then it logs the details here in backup.log and here you can see that the cleanup has been started it retained the backups and it has completed all the tasks if i go to my google drive and you can see that under n10 docker backup there is an folder created here and inside that folder you can see that the n10 underscore backup the file that has been created that has been added here so that means our script is working so the last step that is pending that is schedule the backup with the cron so cron is nothing but a scheduler on your server we'll have to set up a cron that will start the particular docker container at a given particular time and uh, the docker container will take care of, of it itself so our docker container has prepared the backups uploaded to google drive so our job is to just schedule it at this particular date of the time for which we'll have to log in back again to your server via ssh or if you have logged in before then you can use that session i'll copy this first command that is to create a cron i'll go to server make sure you are logged in as a root enter the command and then there will be a file in front of you you can go to the bottom of the file and here you will have to copy this command so what this command does it just starts your docker container at 1 am every day so make sure that this 1 am is utc time and not your local time because your server time is set up in utc you can change the time accordingly so it's 01 so it's minutes and it's hours you can change the time based on your preference and then i'll enter the command here and i'll click on control x y and enter what we have done here is just set up a cron job that will run your docker container every night at 1 am and that's it our docker container will take care of it automatically and it will be run by your server cron job at every night 1 am so the last step here is to just show you if this backups particularly work or not so i'll intentionally delete some workflows or credentials from this anatan instance and then i'll restore the backup and show you this particular backup actually works so this is my anatan instance for which i have set up the whole backup system and i'll delete some workflows here there are three workflows and one credential here shell google drive account i'll delete it from here then i'll go to workflows here are three workflows i'll delete two and i just refresh to show you the proof there is only one workflow and there is no credential i'll go back to the document and then 
first to restore the backup you will have to stop your nvt container for which you will have to know the name of your nvt container to know the name of your nvt instance you can come back to your uh, terminal and just type docker ps here once i enter the docker ps it has shown me all the list of containers available here so here i'll find the nvt container and here you can see that the name of the container is nvt the next command is to run that is docker stop and the name of your nvt container container has been stopped here the next step is to find which backup to restore for which i'll copy this command so this command is nothing but it finds out the backup files in this particular directory slash opt slash nitm backups i'll enter this command and you can see that there are three files here backup.log in which all backup.log stores this is the backup.sh file so that is the shell file that we created which has which contains the whole script and this is the backup i'll have to restore what i'll do i'll copy the name of this particular backup i'll copy this backup from here i'll go back to my document and here there is an command you can see that extract it to your nvtn data volume so here you, uh, what it what this particular script does that it copies the backup uh, from your slash opt slash nvtn backups and then it just restores with your nvtn container so here you will have to only replace one thing that is the name of your backup file so this is the name of your backup file i've copied it from my terminal I'll paste it here, and then I'll copy this command. I'll go to my terminal again and enter this command. It will take some time, and the command will get executed. Once that command gets executed, now it's time to start your Docker container again. For which you'll have to go to your terminal again and type Docker start your container name. Docker start nitn. Nitn has been started again. I have came to, I have came to my nitn instance. I'll click on refresh. Once I refreshed, you can see that my all three workflows are back. My credential has been back again with the Google Drive account. And that's it for this particular video. You are done with this particular backup. So for this particular video, I have spent a time of more than a week to research to create a script and test this entire automation flow. So if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this particular video. and if you have any questions related to this video or for this step you can ask me in the comment section or directly reach out to me via social media i'll be happy to help if you are facing any issues within this particular script or having this backup and make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you for watching this video have a great day bye